Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to show you how to replace the blower motor on a gas furnace with a universal blower motor. Uh, this is a pretty easy process but we're going to show you every step. So right here we're just going to show you the ignition process so you can actually hear what the motor sounds like when it tries to start and diagnose your furnace. So we heard there that the motor tried to um, kick on, but obviously it didn't. We've already checked the capacitor on this one and it was bad. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to replace the motor. So we'll go ahead and start by removing this front panel, which will give us access to the blower motor and the control board. Next, we're gonna start by removing the thermostat wires. This one is very basic, just a red and a white since this is just for a heat. Next, we're gonna remove the wires for the blower motor. Blue is for heat, black is for cool, and this red wire was just in the park pin on the control board. And lastly, our neutral wire needs to come off and all of the blower motor wires are now disconnected so we can set those aside. Next, we're going to remove the actual metal piece that holds the control board and the transformer in place. Uh, it's typically just a couple of screws on the top or bottom. Uh, some of the trains, you have to take a screw loose from the upper part of the cabinet and once this is loose, we can just simply move the control board over to the side. This particular one had a little plastic clip holding it in place. So we went ahead and disconnected that. Okay, now we're gonna remove the screws that actually hold the blower motor in place. And usually it's just two screws either going up into the top of the cabinet or this one, they went straight forward. And then we're simply just gonna slide this whole assembly out. There's just a track that all these blower motors just slide into and they're actually very easy to remove as you can see. Next, we're gonna loosen the tabs that hold the blower motor in place. We're using this 3 8 nut driver that you can find in our Amazon Marketplace. Simply click on the video description and you will see all of these tools and products that I use on a daily basis. So once we have these screws removed, we're going to flip this whole assembly over. and we'll be able to have access to this lock nut. And I'll just loosen that. And then once it's loose, we will flip this assembly back over onto the other side. All right, so now we simply lift up on the blower motor and it's as easy as that. And this is what happens, folks, when you don't replace your air filter as often as you should. Always remember to replace your air filter on a regular basis. Now, one thing that you might find helpful is clean a little part off of your blower assembly and right motor side. That way, when you take this blower wheel out, you will know which side goes which and avoid putting the blower motor in the wrong way. Uh, next, there's this metal piece that um, kind of directs air. Just a few screws here to remove that. And then this whole assembly or blower wheel rather will just slide out. This one was extremely dirty. So I took the opportunity to go ahead and take it outside and give it a good cleaning. Again, this is what happens when you don't replace your air filter. Uh, it can cause all kinds of problems and it's just not a good thing. So 
So I could have just replaced this motor and been done with it, but I really thought this would be helpful. Even though it's not perfect, um, it's so much better than it was. So again, we're gonna take that motor side and line it up with the side with the holes for those motor tabs, reattach this metal piece, and then we're gonna flip it onto the side where the holes are that hold the motor in place. Now this is the belly band kit that we're gonna use. It's made by Fastco. And I got this from Johnstone Supply. They were able to match up the uh, belly band as well as the universal motor, saving uh, several hundred dollars on this setup really. So this one has these little grommets and these metal inserts, and there was two sets of holes. So we had to move the rubber grommet to the outside edge and the easiest way was to uh, remove the metal piece then the rubber will slide through the hole and we just repeated that on all three of these uh, arms. Now as a homeowner or a DIYer sometimes you can go into Johnstone and get the parts that you need. Uh, you're taking a little bit of a gamble but sometimes they will give you the parts even though you don't have an account. Now this is a Sentry DL1036 universal motor. I believe it was a three quarter horse or a half, but this is the one that they um, suggested as a direct replacement. Well, a universal replacement that would work. So we're gonna take it out of the packaging here and then slide it into our belly band. And what we're doing here is we're just gonna see how far off of the end of this motor those arms are. And we're just gonna duplicate that on our new motor. Once we have that roughly in the right position, we're just gonna slide the whole thing out and we're gonna tighten that belly band down so that we'll have a nice snug fit around our motor. Next, we'll just slide it back into the hole, line up our holes, our threaded holes, and we'll put in our fasteners. All right, so we're gonna flip it over on to its front side here. And we're just going to make sure that this blower wheel is exactly centered in the housing. Once we have it where we want it, what we're gonna do is line up the flat part of the shaft with where this locking screw or bolt will go. If you don't have this on that flat spot, you could end up having this lock nut slip around the shaft and it's not gonna be good. So make sure it's on the flat part and you'll be golden. All right, what I like to do next is just go ahead and spin this, make sure everything is clear, nothing is rubbing. And next we're just gonna simply slide this back onto the tracks that we pulled it off and reassemble uh, just as we took everything apart. Now you could do this while the motor is out if you'd like, but we're just gonna go ahead and replace our capacitor with the new one. Pretty simple, we just refasten the new one. And then the two matching wires, uh, this one had two purple wires, those will go to our capacitor. Uh, a lot of times they're brown, but the two colors that are exactly the same 
will be the ones that will go to your capacitor. So as you could probably tell, our new motor does not have these pins on the end. So we're simply gonna clip these pigtails off of the old motor. And what we're gonna use are these Wago lock levers. These are amazing to have in your toolkit. They're extremely easy to use. All you do is open one of the uh, tabs there. You can slide a stranded wire or a solid wire through until it hits the end and then simply lock it back into place. As you can see, we're hitting the end there and boom, locked into place. It's not gonna go anywhere. The beauty of these is that you can reuse them unlike the traditional stab connectors and you can use braided wires or stranded wires, which is awesome. So we're just gonna do this for each of these uh, wires, red, blue, white, and black. And you can find these Wago lock levers in the video description. There's a link to our Amazon storefront and you can find these in the electrical section. All right, so now that we've got those wires all hooked up, we're going to just reinstall this uh, metal piece that has our control board and our transformer attached. So we're just gonna reattach that into the same holes that we disconnected it from. Next, we're going to attach our blower motor wires. And first we'll start with our heat wire, which was blue. Then our cool wire, which was black. Our spare wire, which is red. There's two ports, so you can connect it to either of those. And lastly, our neutral, where it says BLM where all of the other white wires are here on the board. And next, we're just going to reinstall our thermostat wire. W is for white, red is for R, and just reinstall our front cover. And that's pretty much it, folks. We'll let this thing run and start up. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, this system is back up and running. We were able to save uh, several hundred dollars. Uh, this blower motor as a universal one was only about $150 as opposed, I think the OEM was about $450. So definitely worth investigating on if you can get a universal blower motor for your furnace and save you hundreds of dollars. Check out this playlist for more furnace repair videos and we'll catch you guys on the next one later.